As always, be comfortable with the operation of your equipment, know, understand, and follow all the safety directions, and don't do something just because you saw a guy on the internet do it. This week I'm starting a series of videos where I build a large dining room table from reclaimed lumber that came from a barn that blew down on my grandfather's farm. I did a vlog style video of this reclaiming process and I'll put a link to that in the description below. I started by milling this rough sawn reclaimed lumber down to a consistent thickness. True Track sent me a very nice track saw system to try out and I used it to joint one edge of each of these boards. I like the system so well that I'm going to do a separate video detailing some of the things that you can do with the system. After joining one edge, I ran all the boards through the table saw to clean up the opposite side and remove deeper defects that I thought would cause problems with the overall top construction. After getting everything trimmed to width, figuring out the placement of the boards, I used my plate joiner to index all the pieces so that I could easily fit them together with a flat top. While plate joining or biscuit joining does not really do a lot for strength, it sure helps index the top so that you get a nice uniform fit across the length of a long top like this. For the glue up, I took pairs of boards, coated them with thick coats of glue, and then glued up the pair. Here I'm using a wedge and glue up board technique to glue up the pairs of tabletop boards. You can use a small clamp to drive the two wedges together to increase the clamping power of this system. So I ended up with three pairs of boards and then a single center board that I'll run through the planer one last time to clean up excess glue as well as flatten the boards a little more. Back in the shop, I put the boards back in the original orientation, mixed up some epoxy to fill in all of the deep voids, nail holes, and so forth. The single center board I mentioned before had some split down the middle, so I decided to install some Dutchman to help control that split as well as just a decorative feature of the table. Using a router template and a good sharp bit, you get a great clean Dutchman cutout as well as hole to put it in. I can't imagine doing this the old fashioned way with a chisel and mallet. After a little sanding to sneak up on the size of the Dutchman, they fit right in and glue them in with regular wood glue. Leave them a little proud of the surface and then pare them down with a chisel, then a final sanding to make them even with the top.
finally back to the glue up stage to glue up all of the pairs of boards into a solid single top. I discovered that the glue up time or the working time of the glue was pretty short so I was gluing one joint at a time and then clamping together and then moving on to the next joint. Once the glue up was dry, I started flattening the top. I quickly decided that the power planer would be the best option with all the knots and epoxy spots. I set the power plane to a really shallow depth and took light passes to clean up the epoxy, smooth out where the knots were, and get the bigger part of the high spots knocked down first. I had this large knot that I thought was stable blow out while I was planing the top, so I mixed up a little epoxy to fill the void. It was a pretty deep epoxy pour, so I used the torch to pop all the bubbles. After about five or six hours of planing and flattening and sanding, I got to a fairly flat top that's about ready to allow me to move on to the next step, which would be installing the breadboard ends. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. And tune in next week when I'll show you the process of making the breadboard ends as well as starting on the trestle undercarriage of the table.